Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's Saturday, May 7th. I'm gonna make some ribs today using the rib ring for the first time. So I'm setting up my smoker here. I got my charcoal and wood chips, my billows connected to my Ego battery to power it, keep our temperature steady, water in the pan down there, and a little bit of charcoal lit here in the chimney that I'm gonna pour on top to spark this thing up. Okay, as you can see, I've got the smoker all together here. Billows is plugged in and running the show. Um, quick tip, you want to make sure you fill the water pan and get your shelves in and even your thermometer stuck in, especially if you're gonna thread through a thermometer, um, like to put inside of a piece of meat, um, before you put in the charcoal. Because as soon as you light this, it's gonna start smoking very quickly. And if you're trying to thread a thermometer through there or fill the water pan when it's smoking like that, you're gonna breathe in a lot of smoke, it's not pleasant. <laughs> so just do that stuff in advance and then just very carefully lift the center cylinder onto the base so that you don't spill any of the water. Here's what we're using to cook our ribs today. First cook with this rib ring, which is designed to fit more racks of ribs than would normally fit on this model of smoker. This model of smoker is not wide enough to even fit one full rack of ribs normally. You have to cut them in half. The idea here is that you stand them up and you thread them through like so, and you can put in several and therefore you can cook, I think they advertise like five racks. We're gonna just do two today and see how that works. So um, we're gonna let this warm up for about an hour. And during that time, I need to finish prepping the meat because I haven't done that yet. Okay, time to prep the meat. Um, I've got about uh, 90 minutes-ish before cook time. I usually like to do this the night before, but I was a delinquent, so we're gonna do it now. And in the spirit of continually trying to improve and try different things. We're gonna do another experiment today. Uh, we're gonna do one rack the way I normally would, which is just salt and rub. And the other, we're gonna do salt, then mustard as a binder, then the rub, which is just something that people do. People like it, so we're gonna give it a shot, see if it makes the bark better or makes the seasoning stick better. So we've got kosher salt, plain yellow mustard, and this is Memphis dust from the Amazing Ribs website. You can easily find this recipe. Um, this doesn't have salt in it, so it's important to salt the meat before you apply it or it will be bland. So I'm gonna get started rubbing these and then put them back in the fridge. And in about 80-ish minutes, we'll put them in the uh, rib ring and start smoking. Here are our two prepped racks of ribs. Again, they're St. Louis style. Uh, pretty much the same size, bought at the same place. Um, they're really thick, so I think they're going to take a while to cook, maybe a little bit longer than usual. But as you can tell, this one in the back has the mustard below the rub, and the one in the front does not. It just has salt. So we're going to take these outside, uh, put them on the rib ring, and then set them on the smoker. And I've got a little toothpick here I'm going to stick into the top of the mustard one so that we can tell which one's which when they're done. All right, here they are. We've got our two racks of ribs in the ring. It seems like it's working pretty well. Um, I don't know that you could fill this totally full because you wouldn't have any air room between them. But I mean, I think you could definitely get another one in the middle. Um, you know, they say that this is like for putting it in a chicken or something. Um, but today we're just gonna do the two racks of ribs. Um, there's a pan, a drip pan that comes with this, uh, which I'm not gonna use because it's just gonna block airflow. So I'm just going to use this as a handle, and I'm going to lower the whole thing onto the bottom rack of the smoker. And it's going to be important to make sure that we pull the probe back a little bit so we don't get stuck on that as uh, we lower the ring in. So here we go. And there we have it. We'll cover this up. And this is going to smoke for at least six hours, probably more like seven. Uh, they're very thick. So uh, we'll check on them, uh, well, maybe 6 o'clock tonight. Okay, it's about 6.40 p.m. And these have been on for, I don't know, seven and a half hours? Yeah, about seven and a half. 
And if you look at the bottom, you can see how the bones are sticking out. So these are pretty, pretty close to done. I think they're done. They've also shrunk a lot like they've contracted. So we're going to take these off carefully. Oh, it's stuck to the plate below. Whoops. And put this on that pan I told you about earlier. And we'll take them inside. Okay, so it's time to cut our ribs. Uh, over here, we've got the ones that had the mustard. You can tell because of the toothpick. These do not have the mustard. Um, so we're gonna just see how tender they are. Let me remove them and try to cut them here. So here, again, with the no mustard. The bones are pulling out really nicely. Uh, this end is really small compared to this end, so these are probably overcooked. That's pretty normal. Cuts pretty easily. Let's take a look inside here. Uh, looks juicy. Not much of a smoke ring on this, but um, good hard bark. And it seems really tender. Uh, let's push these aside. And we'll try the mustard ribs now. And they look pretty much identically cooked. You can see where the ribs are. Cut off that small end and then cut through with the thick part here. Oh, you can see it meets pulling it apart. And it looks pretty much the same. So we'll see now how they taste. All right, now it's time for the taste test. This one is the plain rib. This one is the mustard rib. Let's see how they compare. All right, one bite in, and um, I can tell you that they're pretty similar. Um, yeah, they cooked very similarly. They're both very tender, uh, both very tasty. Um, the one with the mustard does have a bit of a, a tang to it from the mustard, but other than that, it doesn't seem like there's a, a better or different bark or more of the rub on it. Just a little bit of that acid from the mustard stick with it. So it was good, but I don't think it's you know necessary. Uh, so just you know, use it uh, if that's what you like. Um, so for now... I'm going to finish eating these. We've got some nice toppings here, some fermented hot honey and some hot sauces. So we'll enjoy our dinner. Uh, thank you for watching, and uh, go out there and try to smoke some ribs yourself, whichever way you like them. <laughs>